Welcome to the Not So Planned Podcast, where we take you on a journey through the exciting and unpredictable at CAG here in Guatemala. Our podcast is all about exploring how God moves in our daily school routines, whether they are planned or completely unexpected. Welcome back, guys, to the Not So Planned Podcast. Uh, I'm here today with Sophia Strickland because Ailey was sick today. Um, how was your weekend, Sophia? My weekend was very good. We celebrated Mother's Day, and it was just a very relaxing weekend before these last two weeks of school. Oh, yeah. Are you ready for finals and get this over with? Not at all. <laughs> well, it's crazy how the year's flown by so quickly. It really is. It feels like we were just starting high school, and now we're going into 10th grade, which is crazy. Yeah, I still remember Servant Days. That was, that was a fun time. Servant Days was definitely one of my favorite memories. All right. Well, today we have a little bit of a special thing. We have a game trivia about 2024 as we're recapping uh, this past year or whatever, starting this year. So Sophia. Yeah, and since we have graduation coming up, it seems fair that we can um, honor the class of 2024 in this way. So the first question we have is what city will host the 2024 Olympics? What would you say, Caleb? Uh, recently, there's been a lot of games and like sport things going on inside of like uh, Middle East. So mm-hmm. I'd have to say possibly Dubai. Okay. I will. We're going to give the answers at the end when we ask our guests these questions again. But that's a good guess. Um, when is the U.S. elections? Like what month of this year? Well, this is all my answer going to be personal based and opinion based, but I'd say October because like I was born in October and that for me arguably is the best month. You have um, fall and you have like, for those of you who like Starbucks, um, pumpkin spice lattes. That's definitely the highlight of October. Okay. And then our final question is what city was the Super Bowl 2024 in? Ooh. I don't know if I remember that. I'd say Atlanta, because, like, Georgia is just one of the better states. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to move into uh, our interview with our guest. We have a very special guest this week. All right. So our guest is a missionary volunteer at, C- at the Christian Academy of Guatemala, where she is communications coordinator, student media teacher and advisor, and quill and scroll advisor, and as well as a career guidance teacher. Through her four years of high school photojournalism and yearbook classes, she knew she would do something in design. After getting an AS degree in commercial art and BA degree in visual communications, she spent 12 years in corporate for-profit work before becoming a mom and missionary. For the past 19 years, she uses her experience for nonprofit work. In her free time, she enjoys gardening, wellness coaching, posting videos for fellow parents, and family time with her husband of 24 years and four kids. Her life focuses on acts 2024 20, and go-to verse is first peter 5 7 please welcome mrs davis thank you for having me <laughs> hello mrs davis how are you doing today i'm doing well and i hope eileen gets better soon yeah. <laughs> did, we miss her did you enjoy your mother's day i did i um i'm a little greedy i celebrate both the guatemalan and the u.s mother's <laughs> day and they both follow my birthday so I uh, have a lot of dark chocolate and roses at my house. <laughs> so is it three in one? It is three in one. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> All right. So we're going to open up with a couple of questions. Okay. And the first of which is, what is your story? Like, how did you get from the U.S. to here in Guatemala? That is a very good question. I knew after accepting Jesus when I was 24 years old, about a, two months later, I was at a, a church. And I forget what the exact message was other than, it was kind of like getting the boat. And so fast forward four months later, I meet my now husband and I warn him and say, look, God is calling me to sell all my stuff and, and do his work. It was kind of my little warning to him. Fast forward to 2004, I am actually pregnant with our first and he comes down to Guatemala on a mission trip. I was supposed to come, but I wasn't able to. And so he comes back and says, we've been called to the mission field. I actually felt a very huge weight lifted off my shoulders because those eight years prior, I was saying, sorry, I hadn't done it yet, God. I don't know what that looks like. So he felt called to come here to um, parallel construction work with the word and the Bible. And it started with concrete floors. And that's a good solid foundation for a home for uh, physical health, but also the foundation of Jesus Christ. And that's how that became so we had Lydia and when she was a year old we moved down here and we've been here ever since. <laughs> That's amazing. 
And then while you're down here, how did you get connected with CAG? Well, actually, in 2005, before coming to, to Guatemala, we went to Texas and had some missionary training. And I met Gail and Greg Malcheski. And I also met Mark and his wife, Agrellis. I can't remember <laughs> right now. And so I met many CAG people that were coming down. And for a two-year commitment, of course, they stayed almost over two decades, a decade for each. And was like, that sounds great. So um, when our oldest was about three years old, I'm like, you know, that's CAG. We were not anywhere near uh, the city in our ministry. And I prayed for 11 years for um, God to open the door to come here. And he did. In March 2019, we visited the campus. And it was great to do that with the kids because they were able to get some input on whether they wanted to come here or not. And so August 2019, we as a family, moved to this area and then attended the school. That's incredible. That's cool. <laughs> I have another question for you. Did you know about Guatemala or, like, did you ever have, like, a, I would say, like, an opinion on Guatemala before you heard about it from Gail and guys? No, good question. I actually, um, so my husband was coming here on his mission trip, and I was kind of like, where's Guatemala? <laughs> I knew yeah. it was in Central America somewhere. We had friends that always did ministry in Honduras and Haiti. And again, I kind of knew about whereabouts they were. Didn't really have or make an opinion. I knew I saw pictures of my friends ministering here. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have one because I came with an open heart. I figured if I put my flesh and opinion into it, I would have been a little resistant. But knowing, again, for eight years, I was like, God, whatever that looks like. But we thought we would do this when we retired and... Um, after kids were, mm -hmm. you know, off and, and things like that. But we always made a joke that, you know, we were retired and now we're doing mission work. So um, similar sort of. But no, I didn't have any preconceived or opinions or guesses about Guatemala. Um, no, we're just familiar. It helped us, I think, yeah. blend better. <laughs> okay, that's amazing. I have another question for you. So since you've moved to Guatemala and you've gotten more connected with CAG, you started taking on the yearbook and um, – so how did that happen? Like, how did you, how were you prepared and what, what happened with the yearbook? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you for asking that question because I did, I was hired, when I interviewed, I interviewed as a recruit, recruitment coordinator in communications. And so I thought, this is great. Again, God's using whatever I've done professionally to do it with ministry. And I've been blessed to do that with others prior to that. So I got in, started doing all of this work and I would, uh, come and look at the yearbook and see what was going on and how it was done. It just happened to be the year of 19, the fall year of spring, uh, sorry, 19 and 20. And so in March 2020, I had started to shadow Mrs. Malcheski as she had uh, advised the yearbook for 14 years prior, 14 books. And um, we were, we, she and I both had to finish the 2019, 2020 yearbook the yellow and blue. This yes. One, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so right. it was um, a lot of labor off campus in a unique situation. Uh, yeah. So uh, to me, though, I liked it. It was, didn't feel like work to me. It was a lot of fun. And it's a lot of fun, too, to have the students engaged in that. So, you know, without um, imposing too much, I was kind of like, can I help you do it? So we did it together. And then at that time, she'd already had plans to either do a furlough or a sabbatical or all these different things. Um, she ended up actually staying the next following year, but still had so many responsibilities. So I was happy to continue at that point being the main uh, teacher for that. Yeah. And as you've done student media and the yearbook for these past couple of years, how have you seen like different students grow in like different aspects, whether that's like, you know, probably mostly academically, because that's what we do here. Yeah, so that year that I helped with this book, it was just yearbook. And so I saw some of the students, um, you know, they did and they did very well and they were create creative. But so I kind of rebranded the class to be student media to include more uh, resources, whether it's social media, websites, broadcast, podcast, anything like this. And so it was a lot of uh, joy to, to be able to do that and have the freedom. I had support of the administration to do that. And so with that, I was able to have, I had 20 students when we were offline, actually. So I divided it into newspaper and yearbook at that time. And then the next year we added website, which you may or may, people did or didn't know we had a student news online website. And then uh, the literary magazine, which we included the entire community to submit to the, at this past year though, because 
we changed our printing from one vendor to another and everything changed, the software changed, the printing changed. We just uh, did yearbook, but uh, thankfully now we're doing podcast. <laughs> and I don't know, do they have pod, uh, student media in the States? They do. And so I didn't really answer your question about watching students grow. I was blessed to have some students for several years in a row. I know one in particular was three years in a row. And so um, I know a few of them are in communications, maybe not print media, but that's been kind of nice and fun to see them continue with that in college. Now, in the States, there's a lot of student media. They actually have um, social media accounts. The students run them. They push them because in the U.S., student media is protected legally by the Constitution. And so um, here I've already looked at certain things. We are and aren't protected, so it's a little cha challenging. But otherwise, um, my main focus, too, in addition to student media and journalism, is have a voice. So I have another question for you. So now that we've heard your story and you've moved down to Guatemala and you did incredible things with your husband and your kids, um, what would you recommend to people who are either thinking about moving down to Guatemala to come to CAG or just to be missionaries here? What would you like caution them against? What would you recommend? Anything you'd like to say to them? That's a loaded question, <laughs> but a very, very good one. Cause yeah, I, it's one of those, you know, people always say, what would you say to your younger self? Or, you know, we really didn't ask or get a whole bunch of advice. Um, I think coming um, with an open heart and, and mind, it really will, has been helpful and, and made us successful. In addition to that, we had training prior to coming with biblical foundation for all of it. Cause to this day, there's uh, biblical priorities of your life. Um, we go to that often. So I would really let people know that if God is calling you to come, that um, if you really know it's his word, you should come. <laughs> you shouldn't. It's better to be in his will and suffer than it is to be out of his will and suffer. I've been there too many times, so it's better to be in, uh, in his will. And so with that being said, how do you know you're in his will? So that's the main thing where you have to uh, ask a, a pastor to pray with you about coming to Guatemala and, and moving and whether you're by yourself as a single or with a couple or with a family. And then talk to some friends that are really rooted in their walk with Christ. Um, and then the last one is just, again, especially if you're a couple, pray with each other together about that. It's real important that you have uh, God really telling you in more than one source than just your heart and your head and your conversations with him. But there's nothing other than that warnings per se. I think it's I've seen missionaries come, and if that could be called as a failure, is that they would come with expectations um, for this to be like the states or to be uh, a certain way because they, you know, have resources. Um, I know we were encouraged to come with language and culture uh, learning the mm -hmm. first year. If you hit the ground running, you'll probably leave the fields just as fast. And... We've talked a little bit about student media just right now, but how about Korean guidance? What What is Korean guidance here at CAG? Yeah, so before even I you know, took it over, it was uh, an amazing class where students have an opportunity to get their resume started if they don't have one, get uh, interview skills, do um, some college research and or others. Now, I feel like I've added more where I don't feel like everyone should be pressured to go to college. So if you want to go to the workforce, another ministry, nonprofit service, or um, military, that you should be you know open to explore that too. Because I asked the students too about feedback and they just so I don't really, you know, even though I'm going to college, I feel like there's pressure. Or I don't know if I want to go to college. So career class is once a week. It takes away one of your classes, which I think some students like. They're like, yay, I don't have that class on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, like, for the first quarter, it's seniors. Second quarter, it's freshmen. Third quarter, it'll be 10th grade, sophomores. And then fourth quarter are the juniors. And it helps us get them prepared for that process, planning and preparation after CAG, whatever that may be, even if there's a gap year. And we encourage and, and guide on how to do a gap year as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then, I'm sorry, going back to um, my question, uh, what differences have you seen from Guatemala to the U.S.? And I know I'm sure there's a ton, but um, what differences have you seen in, like, the culture around you? And also, what differences have you seen in yourself and how you react in the different cultures? That's awesome. <laughs> I have greatly changed being here. I am more patient and... Um... 
you know, uh, standing in line in Europe, they call it queuing. And so I feel like we can queue very, very well. Uh, even with our kids, our kids have always had to do it. So when I see someone else's child getting very you know, anxious, ours do too. Our kids are kids, all kids. But uh, that's something where, because back when we first got here, you had to go to the bank to pay the electric bill. And that's only 2006, seven, eight, nine, you know, and only, you know, I can't even think of when it does. You can start paying online or pay your, your landlord. So the difference is um, here it was interesting because when we first got here, I felt like this was like the 1930s and in current time because you have like some people with or without running water, but they have a cell phone. And so that just didn't make sense to me as a, a foreigner coming in. And so I kept reminding ourselves, this is a third world country, but you come to the city and you don't see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are now with CAG's location is in the city. And so for 14 years prior to CAG, we were outside of Antigua, a very, you know, 500 plus years colonial city. And so a lot of our ministry was towards Fuego, the, the volcano. Mm-hmm. And so we were used to seeing people living in, you know, lamina, which is metal corrugated metal houses. And so you just have the full spectrum of, of living conditions very close together. You have some of that in the States, but not as much or as, as prevalent. So for me, I've had to grow in, you know, in the in patience. And, and again, in the States, you can control things, you have laws and you have uh, money or resources. And here there are still, um, there's still money, there's still laws and there's still, but you have limited resources. Mm -hmm. Even if you have the the money or the tools, uh, whether it's medical care or um, legal laws, you know, like you're renting and things like that. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, you know, I personally had to uh, get medical care. Speaking of that, we were blessed for over a decade not to have to use it, but I fell, broke my wrist, and had to get surgery, and I'm fine. Everything's great. So yeah. <laughs> uh, God was good and helped us raise the funds quickly. But it, it's just living on faith every day. I tell, um, I had someone in the States ask, and I said, we live on prayer and faith every month. None of it's, our funds are guaranteed, and tomorrow's not either. So it's real important to, to focus on him daily. Yeah, it gives you real perspective on you're constantly seeing people living on the streets and people who don't have shoes or don't have enough clothes. Um, and it just makes you think a lot about life and puts it into perspective a lot more than it would in the States because you can see the same thing, but it's not in the same context. Mm-mm. No, you're exactly right. right. You were saying something about working in Fuego. What was that like? Well, near it, not yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know we were at the north side of Antigua, and it wasn't until around 2015 when Fuego blew a lot and the ash came towards us. And I was like, what is this? Like black snow, that's what we called it. And then um, we realized you can immediately have respiratory issues and things like that. So then, but Fuego has always blown its top, if you will. And so we have friends that live near there. And now that we went with them to their ministry, they're actually locals who over time have now become Guatemalan in-country local ministry missionaries. Um, it, it's like they live with that all the time, like breathing problems. I mean, that's just something like we're like, oh, right now I have you know, a cold or a cough or an allergy mm-hmm. and it's going to come and it's going to go. But when it's like your daily life where that's just a constant, you're fighting and battling, it's so different. And then, like you said, too, that the need is greater, whether it's shoes, whether it's education. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. Most of the Guatemalan families we've worked with, the education goes to second grade. And we're um, we've been blessed to be part of breaking that generation, um, you know, constant is second grade. And that's it. And then go work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that that. So that to see that and be with that, it was been tough because mm-hmm. <laughs> you just want to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say living with volcano ash, that's definitely one of the bigger disadvantages of living in Guatemala, that earthquakes, a lot of trash. Yeah. How about that quake we had yesterday? Yeah. That was <laughs> really got me up really early. Did it wake you up? It woke me no, up. No, I, I didn't wake up. You slept? Yeah. I slept in and like. <laughs> I woke up and my dad's like, wow, there's a 6.4 earthquake. I'm like, there's an earthquake? And my sister's like, yeah, Caleb, there's an earthquake. I'm like, what earthquake was there? Yeah, it was it was fun. I teach English online and I was teaching. Oh, really? <laughs> that must have been interesting. I had to tell them, I have to go. And I turned it off. 
And so last night I watched the replay. It was pretty funny. Like I was kept thinking it wasn't that bad, but when you watch the replay, was, my camera was shaking. Was very I have like a curtain background and everything. So yeah, it was very strong. So yeah, welcome to Guatemala. Yeah. yeah. Here in Guatemala, we don't have snow days. We have ash days. We do. <laughs> and protests. Yeah. All right. We want to ask you one last question, Mr. Mm -hmm. Davis. Sure. Um, what is like the student media verse? You don't remember it. So I don't okay. remember the actual book and thing, but it's basically anything and everything you do. Because in the book, it talks about eating and sleeping and drinking. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, do it for the glory of God. Yep. And that's really like what we create, whether it's a book, mm -hmm. whether it's a video, whether it's an Instagram post. We just make sure we're glorifying God in all we do, that we have a computer, that we have the talent. We can mm -hmm. read, we can write, we can select a font. And that's what I really wanted to the students to know in, this, in our class. That's beautiful. It's a really good verse it's just for like daily life as well. Mm -hmm. like whatever you do. Absolutely. Your glory is God. Yeah. Well, now we're going to go into our trivia, trivia questions. We have a couple questions to ask you and we're going to try and see and if, if you can guess the answer. Can so, I use my phone? <laughs> <laughs> no. So the first one is, what city will host the 2024 Olympics? And we have some options if you need some options. Oh, yeah. I can like, phone a friend. Or... Okay. No, let me... Tokyo, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Dubai, Moscow, or Paris? Ooh. I said Dubai. I think it's Paris. You think it's Paris? I think I saw something. Yeah. Believe it or not, you may or may not know, but in Florida, I was on the committee to get the Olympics in Florida in 2012. So I was really... Wow. Really? I still have a grudge against London because they won. <laughs> but yes. So years prior, you do it like 10 to 15 years yeah, prior. Yeah, you do. And um, yeah, I was on the committee, so wow. that's really cool. We didn't get it though. But. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you, you say Paris? I would say Paris. Okay, you're correct. <gasps> Yay! Good job. All okay, right. and then the next question: uh -huh. When is the U.S. 2024 elections? What month of this year? It, it is it is December, the first... October, August, or November? It's the first Tuesday in November. Very good. <laughs> yeah, you know Man, it was so close to October though. I do know that. Yes, become a registered voter, all U.S. citizens over the age of 18. That's a little plug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now our last question. What city was the Super Bowl 2024 in? Jog your memory. I am thinking it goes with the new stadium in Las Vegas. There you go. Good ah, job. Three for three. <laughs> I guess Atlanta wasn't that good at football this year. Good thing the Bulldogs were. We know you like Georgia. <laughs> Yeah, well, all thank right. you so much, Ms. Davis, for being Absolutely. here with us and answering all our questions. Great job. Thank you for sitting in and hosting. You were wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Mrs. Davis, and all the time you've put into career and guidance and student media. Thank yeah. you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with whoever you know, family, friends, children, parents, um, distant relatives that you may not talk to very often. Um, hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.